Hey everyone and welcome back to the garden. It's been a really warm weekend here, not massively sunny but still really warm and humid and I'm filming this on Sunday night, it's still over 20 degrees, very muggy but the plants are loving it and at the minute they're taking a lot of watering but I'm sure they'll respond really well over the next few weeks with some really impressive growth. But today I want to show you a plant that is looking impressive right now and that's behind me, the Trachycarpus because they're in flower and if you didn't know, palm trees do flower in the UK Trachycarpus, which of course is the most common, they put these lovely yellow flowers out every single spring. So if you want to know when they flower, for me it tends to be around May time. This year I think a lot of plants are late in terms of growing and flowering. Maybe if you live further south in the country, you might start to see those flowers probably early April maybe. But here, this year, it's June before they've actually really come into their own. If you've got small or young Trachycarpus fortunae, it might not flower just yet. I think there's a certain age you need to get to before they flower. I've seen 10 years written down, but I guess it sort of depends really on the growing conditions, where you are, how much sun, a lot of different factors. But in reality, if they get to maybe two, three foot of trunk, about a metre of trunk, they should start flowering. And mine aren't a particularly massive this year. They will put out more flowers, maybe because I had them in containers last year and with the move and everything, they were probably on the drier side. So this has been the first well first season I guess actually in the ground more access to moisture so I think next year they'll put on a bigger display but let me just show you those flowers and the difference between a male and a female I won't lie this did look better with the sun behind it earlier but if you see here the flowers in this trachycarpus they're generally quite a bright yellow colour and that's because this is a male plant and the only way you can tell if your plant is male or female is when it actually flowers so if you look closer you can see that the flowers look like sort of conventional flowers close up. You can see there's pollen on them, and if I gave that a tap now, you'd see pollen starting to fall from it. Generally, if you look back at the flowers, they do look yellow in appearance. There's little bits of green, but mostly they are a yellow colour. And that is the easiest way of distinguishing a male trachycarpus plant. And this one here is a female flower. So as you can see, they're more of a yellow green. When you look at them from a distance, they're definitely not as yellow as the male flowers are, and also they're a little bit larger. They look quite branched and almost sort of coral-like in appearance. And as you go closer to them, you'll see, I've actually heard it described as small grains, but it, to me, it looks like lots of small little balls, different to the other male, which almost looks like a conventional flower. So early in spring you'll notice some small triangles, little green triangles coming out from the trunk of your trachycarpus. A few weeks later they'll look like this, and then a few weeks after that they branch out more and create these really large yellow green flowers. Trachycarpus flowers don't have any scent as such, but one plant that definitely does in the garden at the minute is this here, which is a euphorbia and it's Frampton fatty, which I got from Pangloba plants. It's a really lovely smelling plant. You can smell the honey throughout half the garden at this time of year. It's a beautiful scent and it's also a very useful plant and it's quite a low growing form of euphorbia too. Mine might get a little bit taller because it's not in full sun, but if you've got somewhere full sun, hot, dry, well-drained soil, then this is a cracking plant. So hopefully now you can tell if your trachycarpus is a male or a female, if it's got to the size where it started flowering. And it's always exciting that first year. I know a lot of my smaller palms, they got to that size where they actually first started flowering, and it is exciting. And then you know whether that palm is a male or a female. Practically, does that make a difference? Well, really, no. Both palms look the same regardless of whether they're male or female, but the difference is that a female can produce berries or fruits that hold seeds, whereas the male flowers, they just tend to go dry, go a bit browny, sort of black coloured, and then they shrivel up. So they don't really have a use beyond pollination, whereas the female ones go on to produce the seeds that you can use to create more palms to your garden. Obviously, you need to think long-term for that, but there's also potential for exciting crosses. And if you don't know, hybrid palms are essentially where you choose the pollen from one variety, you mix it with a female flower from another one, and you put those together and you can create a cross that shares the traits of both parents. So I've got a few different Trachycarpus crosses here, and I've also got my big hybrid palm, which is a Jubutia, which is a cross between a Jubea and a Butia. Again, using the same mechanical method of mixing the pollen from one onto the female flower of the other. 
that's a bit of a simplistic overview looking at hybrids but if you've got both male and female trichocarpus plants in your garden and you do want to get more seeds this year then what you can do obviously you could just leave nature to it and hope that the plants because they're reasonably close together that some of that pollen does get transferred and chances are it will do but if you want to get more seeds more successful pollination then what you can do is actually chop that male flower off come over to the female one and I've seen some people actually tap it above it to get some of that pollen dropping down onto the female flowers or what you can do is use a paintbrush brush the male flower get as much of that pollen on the brush as you can go over to the female and then just brush all those female flowers again transfer the pollen and you stand a higher chance of getting more of those flowers pollinated and more seeds and when it comes to seeds it does take a while for them to form and for those fruits I suppose you call it a fruit really, to actually ripen. They're not edible, but what they tend to do is they slowly develop into these balls, they get larger and larger, and they become like a small grape really. They're quite hard and black purple in colour. They're not ready until realistically late winter or early spring the following year. And what I found at the old garden, I had some nice bunches absolutely full of them. I used the paintbrush method to transfer a lot of that pollen. That's probably what I'll do again this year. But what I actually found is late winter, the blackbirds must have been really hungry because they ate a lot of them. And in the palms I brought here from the old house, I've got so many with these little trachycarpus, small leaves just popping up from the surface of the soil. So obviously nature can spread them around and it does make you wonder if palms will eventually naturalise in a lot more of the UK. Whether that's a good thing or not is a separate issue. But hopefully you get some seeds. Personally, I'm going to try it with this plant and this plant alone because it'd be nice to have some George's Jungle trachycarpus, some actual seedlings that some of you guys can have and have them growing in your own gardens. When it comes to the question of should you remove those flowers or not, I know some people like to because there's a belief that it increases the growth rate of the plant. In theory, yes, any plant that puts energy into flowers could instead put that energy into growth and more leaves. Personally, I've not noticed much of a difference with Trachycarpus. I'm sure there is a slight difference, but for me, I just like the look of the flowers and I think they look great for a couple of weeks a year. But probably a bigger factor when it comes to whether to remove them or not is the mess they create. So the male flowers especially, once they're finished, they just drop these little yellow bits everywhere. They create a proper mess in the garden. So personally, what I like to do is to chop the male flowers off once they're finished flowering or maybe use them to pollinate at that stage. But the female ones, if they're on a plant where I'm not looking to produce seeds, I'll chop them off at the same point. Then on the ones where I'm actually using them to create seeds, like the one further down the line, I will leave those on until next year when those berries have ripened and the seeds ready. And at that point, you can chop any flower spikes off because they're basically dead, they're finished, they won't flower again next year, and they're just these black sort of structural shapes coming out from the trunk. They don't look especially attractive, so you can cut them off at that point. Personally, I really enjoy the flowers, and I think that bright yellow really adds to a tropical vibe of the plant, for a few weeks at least. It's definitely worth the mess for. But if you're just enjoying the display, or you're looking to create new seeds for your garden in the future, then good luck either way, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.